What's up guys? Well, we're starting a new job today. We're gonna do some faux wood beams today. Should be pretty cool. Try to show you some of that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go into Home Depot and get some materials. We just finished up a big job, so having this beam job where we can kind of relax a little bit and take our time is a great feeling. I mean, we took our time on that last job that we just finished. It was like trimming out a whole house, but we were there for a month. And uh, that's not really typical. Usually we're at a job for a week or so. So that was a little off threw us off a little bit but came out good and we're moving on now it's funny whenever you uh, you bring a camera to Home Depot or somewhere in public like this everybody just looks at you like I guess you're doing a TV show or something they're just really interested in what you're doing which is understandable I mean human nature you see a camera you think something's going on so but it's just funny how many people's heads turn and stuff like that it's a little awkward uh it's, it's pretty awkward actually to be talking to a camera in public but i think if you're gonna do youtube you kind of have to get used to that because that's pretty much what it is just pulling up here I'll show you the beams first so we got our dining room beams over here those right there and then there's a sample of the stain we're gonna use a minwax gel stain and these big arched beams we're putting up in a big great room that I do not know if we're gonna have time to show you a video of So we got our floor protected here. We already got our dimensions and how we're gonna lay this thing out. Now we need to go take that lumber that we got, rip it down so it'll fit in the U shape of the beam. What I think we're gonna do is just toggle bolt everything up there. Cause it's the way we're gonna lay it out, it's gonna be this way no matter what. And then we'll find the joist and hit the joist where we can. Cause the layout is set, it's not gonna change. So we'll go outside and then rip those, that lumber down that we got. So here's that beam, a sample of it. And you can see how it doesn't fit around our lumber. So all we gotta do is rip this down so we can make it fit inside of it. And then we can take a screw in from the side and screw into that. So this will go directly onto the ceiling and then this will hug around it once we rip off however much we need. We went ahead and ripped these boards down to what we need and I'll show you this, how this works. We're going to install this on the ceiling and then this will hug it. And it's not too snug, you can see I can move it around, there's a little bit of play in there. But that's what we want because whenever we put these, when we actually go to put these beams up against the uh, the framing of them we don't want to be like fighting it and trying to move it all around so we want at least an eighth of an inch there for play and then this will actually compress a little bit i don't know if you can see that but i'm able to move that in and out so that'll be perfectly fine so now what we're going to do is take these boards that we ripped down go put them in the on the ceiling where they go and then from there we're pretty much just going to wrap wrap them with these beams. All 
All right, so if you haven't seen a toggle bolt before, if you've been watching my channel, you've seen me use them before, but I'll show you if you don't know. This will come up from the bottom. And then this wing piece goes on like that. But what's, what's interesting about it and how it works is it folds down like that. And once it passes the drywall, like we'll pretend my fingers are the drywall, it'll just go like that. And then when you screw it in, it'll compress that and hang it on the drywall. So what we're gonna do right here is, we've already got everything laid out and marked off for how we're gonna lay this out. We're just gonna drill, hold this up in position on our marks, drill up through the holes that are already drilled outside that we just showed you. And then that'll put the holes in the drywall on the ceiling. So we'll go ahead and hold it up and do that now. Now that we have that first hole drilled from our, when we were just holding this board up right now, what you just seen, the hole is too small for that big wing of that toggle bolt to go in there. So I'm coming back with a bigger bit and just making that hole, hogging it out a little bit, making it bigger to fit the wing in it. And that should be good on that one. And you can see now how this, I can push it up in there. I'm not gonna do it because then it won't come out, but uh, it'll fit now and it's not too wide. So it's gonna be, you know, like not enough drywall around to support it, but it's also not too tight where I can't get it in there. But that's pretty much what you wanna see right there. You're good? Okay. Well. Fill up. There it goes. No, the other one was in. That one wasn't in though. Alright guys, so as you can see right here, I'll try to get zoomed in on that. Right there. So you can see the hole we drilled in the ceiling. Then we obviously drilled that hole on the board outside. And it's just kind of free floating there hanging we have four of them supporting that board we got to do one more of these full length boards just like this and then we're going to do some uh, perpendicular boards that intersect and those will be cutoffs in between these we'll have to take into account though the um, one inch i'll show you what i'm talking about so you see that circled line on the ceiling right there that's where this board when we compress it by screwing it to the drywall, we're going to have to line that up right there. And then this right here, this other line to the right of it, is the finished edge of the faux foam beam, the faux wood beam that's foam. So that's pretty much the toggle bolt process and how we do that. Actually, you know what? I think I'm just gonna stain this I don't even think he'll know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, that's how it looks from the bottom. I guess you could have a really DIY floating beam there, but no, we're, we're not gonna do that. Just a joke, but you can see how it's hanging there and we're gonna do the other one. We're gonna screw this one up in place and then we'll do the other one. So as I'm putting this in, you gotta kinda let it hang so it pulls down. But I need it to be on my line there. So I'll just ease it in. So now it's no mystery to me which way these joists are running. Because if I look at my board right here, I can see just the waves in the ceiling. So, but what I'm going to do now is uh, measure for these beams. I'm just going to put my laser tool here and get a measurement right up under here. And we're going to do this one exact. 
we're going to do 143 inches on the money because we want this thing to fit tight go down a little bit more Okay, so what you just saw there was us struggling to put this thing in because we didn't think or I didn't think about this crown up here with this window trim. So when you're putting these beams in, you have to put them up at the same time if you want a tight fit, meaning you have to push them up all together at the same distance at the same time. With this in the way, we couldn't do that. That's why you saw us struggling. So to solve that, we just changed the boards around that we had. Thankfully, this is a square room and we could use those same boards and they worked out great. So instead of how we originally installed them, we just took those toggle bolts out and used uh, new ones right here to put this in. Now we can have our small pieces in there and put those in first so we don't have to worry about that trim getting in the way of us putting that beam up. So now, we will get the intersecting pieces and keep moving right along here. I know it's Seems like it's taken a long time, but the only reason for that is it's taken a long time when we had to redo all that, but, uh, well, not all of it, but like half of it. But um, now at this point, we can put these long full length beams in and those will go as such. And then we left a pretty substantial gap in here. That way we're not having to force these perpendicular intersecting beams into there and you know scraping this all up so that's kind of why we did that really this is just kind of like a game of finesse at this point we'll get these measured out installed get these intersecting ones measured and installed leave them up for tonight come back tomorrow stain them and reinstall them so that should be good for this dining room so i'll get a measurement on these using my laser i take three measurements just so I know exactly that I hit the right spot. And if they're similar, which they are right there, then I just go with, with what it is. So that's really crucial because if you just take one laser measurement and you might twist your hand a little bit and it hits the wrong spot and you go with that, it's not gonna be good because you can get a false reading. So what I learned from the first time I cut this earlier was it's super crucial to cut one side and then not get too far into this on that initial cut before you turn it so what i mean is like i'll cut this side this top side get pretty good through it and then rotate the beam line up the square with the initial cut and do the same thing on all three sides otherwise it would be pretty bad because it, it could wander a lot and go off course. So here we go. So you can see me using the square of the fence. And I'm holding it really firm with my left hand. Now that I'm getting like more into the side here, that's where it can it can kind of wander like that. So before I do wander, I'm gonna rotate it and get one side. 
line up the square with the initial cut, and now I can go fully through. So I broke, broke that side off, I'm going to roll it over and do it again. Take that one in. See if we are good. So we're probably just going to get these two beams, we already got that one in, and then probably just get this other long one and call it an early day today. But we wanted to get these in first so we could measure off of them and then get the measurements for the smaller intersecting pieces, if that makes sense. But uh, overall, good first day. Uh, we're going to call it an early day here today and just uh, come back tomorrow and get back at it. And this is what we're working with so far on these foam beams. So it starts right there and then goes all the way down. And that was awesome. The way it was laid out, we missed that vent right there. And the light is perfectly in the middle of the big box. So we did something right. So that's gonna do it for day one on this, this job. Uh, but doing the foam beams, you know, it's kind of a fun and interesting thing to do. A nice little break from the typical trim that we do, like the crown and base and all that. It's always fun to break the cycle there sometimes. But uh, I definitely enjoy it. I definitely enjoyed using this saw uh, on a job site for the first time. So <laughs> anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone who supports this channel. Let me know how you feel about these kind of informal job site videos. I've done many in the past. And uh, we're gonna keep doing more, but we'd like to know what people like to see. Um, we've gotten away from the GoPro because we got a lot of complaints on it, having the GoPro with the wide angle. So right now we're shooting on DSLR and we'll probably use the GoPro just for extra footage. But anyways, I'm rambling on now. We gotta get home and uh, clean all this stuff up actually first. So thanks for watching and we'll see y'all in the next video. Take care.